So, the, today in this lesson, we will uh, develop our first, let's say, web application, okay? And uh, during the example, we will also try to add some new concepts that are sessions and uh, how to interact with databases from the web application, okay? So I already developed uh, the example of today, so I can show you the final goal of this lesson. I run it. We will design a simple, no, a simple exam manager, okay? where the user can log in with username and password and the web application shows the list of exams with the grade okay i can go back to the home page sorry i can log out and if i try to log in with a wrong username and password I am redirected to an error page, okay? Obviously, the information about users and exams are stored in a database, okay? So, let's start a new empty Flask project. And Let's call it exam manager. Okay. So the first thing to do is maybe to create a database for storing our information. Uh, so first of all, I create a new data source, in this case, a MySQL data source, okay? I use my root username and my root password. I don't specify any database because uh, I must create it, so I open the connection to MySQL. This is the connection. There is already another schema. And inside the connection, I create a new schema, a new database. Okay? Let's call it uh, user exams. Execute. Okay, this is the new database. And inside the database, I create, I must create tables, so I will probably need a table for storing users, right? So I create a table, I call it users, and I must define some columns. The first column will be uh, the ID of the user. This will also be the primary key of the table, so I put it not null, auto increment, so that every time I will put a new user inside the database, my SQL will automatically generate an ID for me and primary key. It's an integer, so okay. Then I add another column, for example, for storing the username. This is a string, obviously, so varchar 50. 50 is the maximum length of the string. Also, in this case, I put it not null and also unique because I don't want two users in my system with the same username, okay? Then I create a column for the password. Also in this case, not null. And also in this case, the password will be a string, 50. 
and they can also create uh, um, a column for the name varchar50 and maybe a column for the surname varchar okay I execute the query and now inside my database there is the users table okay I can create some users so I open the table I click right click on the table add a new row the ID will be automatically generated so I put my username for example alberto.mr my password 1234 my name Alberto and my surname okay then I create also another user let's say John dot 91 password 5678 the name is John and the surname is do okay now to store the data inside the DB I must remember to click this button to submit the data to the database so I click it and as you can see my SQL generated two IDs one for me and two for John Do. then I will probably need also a table for storing exams so right click on the schema new table let's call it exams also in this case there will be an ID column, the primary key, so integer, not null, auto increment and primary key. Then we can have, for example, oh sorry, the course, the name of the course is a string, varchar, let's say 50, and also a column for storing the grade. So let's call it grade this time it's uh, an integer not null maybe okay but we also need in this table a reference to the user table of course because we would like to have uh, exams associated with specific users so I need uh, a let's say special column that will be uh, the foreign key to reference the user table so inside the exam table I need also the user ID okay this is an integer it's not null and I can specify that this user ID is the foreign key uh, in the foreign key tab okay I can add a foreign key So the target table will be users and the column is from the user ID of the table exam to the ID of the table user. So this is the foreign key uh, index. From the user ID, the user ID reference uh, the field ID of the table users okay execute I can go inside the exams uh, table and I can add some exam so for example ambient intelligence my grade is, is obviously 30 and my user ID is 1 then I can add another exam let's say virtual reality 25 1 and I can also add some uh, exams for John Doe so ambient intelligence 18 for the ID 2 and so on and so forth I submit the data to the database very good 
Now we have the database with the, some data. And of course, we need some Python code to access this database. And uh, it's better to define a, a separate file for the database operation so that we can decouple the logic, the database logic from the web application logic. Okay? So inside my project, I define a new Python file that will be my uh, database library. Let's call it DB interaction. Uh, sorry, there is an error. Refactor, rename, interaction. Okay. Here I must import the PyMySQL library. So I will probably need a function to check if a user can be authenticated into the system. So I define a function check user. And this function will probably receive two parameters, the username and the password, right? So I define the SQL query that is pretty simple. Select all the fields related to a user. So ID, username, password, name, surname from the table users. Okay, where uh, username equals to s and password equals to the parameter. So let me. Okay, it's pretty simple. This query will uh, check in the users table if there is a user with the given username and password. So the second step is to create, to get a connection, con equals to pymysql dot connect. The user is root, the password is root, the database is this one, user exam, okay? And the host is obviously localhost. Then I create a cursor. And I use the cursor to execute the SQL query. Execute SQL. And here I must put the two parameters that are username, comma, password, comma. Right? Now I can fetch the results. In this case, I'm sure that there will be at most one result because the username is unique. So I can use cursor.fetch1, okay? I close the connection and then I return the result to the caller. Okay? And then I will probably also need a function to get all the exams, okay? So I define a function, get all exams, and I will use the user ID 
to retrieve from the database all the exams of a given user. The pattern is the same of before, so I just copy all the information and then I will change them. So I need to change the query. In this case, I select the course, the name of the course, and the grade from the table, I don't remember the name, exams. Where user ID is equals to my parameter. Okay, in this case, I don't need to join the user table because uh, I already have the user ID information inside the exams table because it's the foreign key. Connection the same of before, cursor. Execute, in this case, the parameter is only one, user ID. And in this case, probably there will be many results. So, cursor.fetch all. Okay? I close the connection, results, results. Good. Before using such a library from the web application logic, it's always better to test it locally, okay? So I define uh, a main inside this file. And I try to print, for example, the check user for a wrong username and a wrong password. I try to print the check user for me, alberto.mr, my password was 1234, and I try also maybe to print all my exams, so get all exams, uh, my ID was 1. Okay, let's run this file. Okay, it seems to work. In the first case, the print uh, prints none because uh, there are any users with this username and this password. In the second case, uh, it prints a tuple with all my information. And in the, in the third case, it prints a list of tuples where any tuple is an exam. Okay, any questions? Good, so we can use such a library in our web application logic. So let's start with the home page. Obviously, I need a template file. So in the template directory, I create a new HTML file and I call it, for example, index.html. Okay? I can define a title. And if you remember in the home page, there were a title, so H1, let's say my exams manager. There was a, an image, right? I already downloaded the image from the web. So I copy it and I put it in the static folder. Okay. Okay. Now we can define an image tag where the source is, we can use URL4. If we are trying to add static elements, we must specify static and also the file name. 
equals to exams dot jpeg okay and then there is the form the login form so I define a, fro a form tag and inside the form I put a line for the username and also an input element for the username type text and I must also specify uh, a name for this element name let's call it username okay then there is the line for the password the input for the password in this case is type password name password okay and then inside the form there is the submit button so input type submit value for example uh, login right so besides specifying uh, the HTML file we need to associate it to specific routes so I open the app file and here I can specify a specific route for the home page app dot route login def this is the logical name of the route login and this route render the template of the login page so we must import the render template function and here we put the file name of the, uh, the index page index.html then I can also define a redirect from the empty URL to the uh, sorry it's not login it's index and also here is index obviously we can also define a redirect from the empty URL to the login uh, the oh, sorry the index route okay so here I can put return redirect we must import it redirect we can use the URL for we must import it URL for and inside the URL for we put the logical name of the index route that is this one okay so let's try this simple uh, web application that it's not complete obviously uh, I must run the app file exam manager run I open it as you can see if I try to uh, enter the website with an empty URL I am redirected to the index to our home page okay obviously if I try to log in nothing happens because we must add some code good let's go back so we must define an action for this form to check the user data and redirect the user to a specific page on the basis of the authentication control 
So it's supposed to have a, a route URL for, for managing uh, um, login data. Oh, sorry. Okay. And I also specified the method to post the data to the login route. So typically a form use, uh, uses a um, post method because otherwise the parameters are uh, displayed in the URL and this is not good especially for, for the password, okay? So I use the post method and now I have to define the login route. So app.route login def here I use the same logical name login and uh, this route won't um, render any templates any HTML file but it will check the user data and it will redirect the user to other routes so if the control will be successful, uh, the, red, the red red will be towards the, for example, a grades route, otherwise to uh, an error page, okay? So the question uh, is, we must implement at, at least three steps. The first step is to extract the data from the form the second step will be check the extracted data and the third step will be if the data is correct show the exam page okay how can I extract username and password, I can use the request object provided by Flask, so I import it, request. I can say that the username is equals to request dot form and here inside the square brackets I must put the name of the input for the username. So I go back to the index and the name is username. So I copy it and I put it here. Okay. I can do the same for the password. The name was password. And okay, the first step is completed. Then I have to check the username and password. We have the our DB interaction library, so I import it. Import DB interaction. And of course I use it. So user equals to db interaction dot check user username username and password right and then I can um, check the user result if user is not none this means that the user exists I can redirect the user so return redirect I imagine, for example, an exam route, okay? Otherwise, I imagine an error route. So return, redirect, URL 
for let's say login error okay is it clear any questions yeah Uh, yes, uh, for uh, a better security, we should use, for example, uh, uh, the HTTPS protocol, so that all the data inside uh, each packet is encrypted. In this case, username and password are not sent in the URL, but are sent inside the response of the request. But obviously, if we use HTTP, uh, this data is, uh, uh, can be intercepted. So we should use uh, HTTPS. Are there any libraries for this? Uh, yes, of course, but you should also have a certificate uh, to use HTTPS. So it's out of scope for our purposes. Okay? Thank you. So I can define two templates file, one for the exam page and one for the login error. New HTML file exams.html. Let's put a title, my exams. And I also define a new HTML file for the login error page. The title in this case is login error. Okay, let's complete this one that is simpler. I can simply put uh, an error message, username and password not valid and I can also add a link to the home page. Go back to the home page. And I use of course the URL for syntax. URL for the logical name of the home page that in this case is index. Okay, quite simple. Instead, here in the exam page, I can put a title, for example, a welcome message, and a line of text, your exams are, and then we will uh, finish this page later on. So let's try this basic authentication mechanism. I rerun the server. Obviously there is uh, some work to do because we need to defi explicitly define the route for such two pages. Okay, so I must define a route For the login error, here I use the same logical name that I use here. So I copy it. And here we simply render the template for the login error page. Right? And the same for the exam page. So I copy this one and I modify it. So exams, then the same logical name, and here exams.html. Okay, now we can try it, rerun the server. I can try with a wrong username and a wrong password. 
Oh, first problem of today, method not allowed. This is because we are using uh, in the form a post uh, mechanism, but we, we must explicitly uh, tell the login function to use a post method, okay? Because the default is the get method. Okay, let's try again. Wrong username and wrong password. Okay, username and password not valid. I can go back to the home page. Now I try my username and my password. Good. I am redirected to the exam route. Okay. Now, obviously in the exams page we should uh, show all the exams of the user. So, before rendering the template, we should uh, retrieve them, the exams from the database. I have the library, get all exams. Unfortunately, I don't have any user ID here, okay? So the question is, where can I get such a user ID? Probably here in the login, right? Because I get all the data of the user from the database. So here I can say that my user ID is equals to user. User is a tuple. And if we go back to the DB interaction library, the ID is in the first position. So the user ID is user of zero, right? Now, how can I communicate such an ID to the exam route? Unfortunately, we cannot use parameters in the redirect. The HTTP protocol is stateless, and so the content of this variable is lost whenever this function return. So you may think to use global variables. Unfortunately, this method doesn't work because uh, a web application is, is shared among all users in the world. And so there is only one instance of the app class, of the app file, and only one instance of the user ID. So, we can do that by using the session abstraction, okay? What is a session? Uh, a session starts when you open a browser and you open a website and you start navigating uh, a website. So, if you think about your experience with popular websites, I don't know, Facebook, you don't have to uh, insert your username and password every time you open a new Facebook page, okay? Such a mechanism is based on cookies. What are cookies are simply uh, strings and the mechanism is pretty simple. So every time, for example, you uh, perform a request to my website, um, I understand that you are a new user because there are no cookies inside your request. I generate a new cookie associated with you. So for example, I put inside that cookie user one. I send back to you the cookie and you promise me that you will attach such a cookie in all your following requests so that I can remember you, okay? And on top of this uh, mechanism, uh, there are sessions. So, in Python and in all the web language in the world, we have sessions 
And in Python, in particular, such a session is a dictionary that is specific for each user. And inside this dictionary, we can store some user data, for example, okay? Such data are stored inside the cookies, so we cannot store a lot of data inside the cookies uh, and inside sessions, of course. But we can store, for example, a flag to, to indicate that the user is already authenticated, for example. Okay? So if I go back to Python, I can import session. And inside the session dictionary, I can store, for example, the user ID. I use this key. This session uh, dictionary appears to be global, but in reality, it's not global. There is a session dictionary for each user. Okay? In this way, here, I can get the user ID from the session. User ID equals session. I use, for example, the get function to get data from a dictionary, where the key is user ID, and the default value is, is for example, an empty string. So now I can check the user ID. So if the user ID is equal to the empty string, this means that the user is not authenticated because there is no user ID inside the session. And so I can redirect the user to, for example, the home page where there is the login. Return URL for index as I can retrieve all the exams from the database. So db interaction dot get all exams and I use the user ID. Okay? I delete this line. And in this way, I can define a new parameter to be used in the exam HTML. Let's call it user exams equals to the retrieved exams. Okay? In this way, in the exams page, we can use the user exams parameter. So, I define a list ul and inside the list I perform a for loop for exam in user exams okay the syntax is different from python a little bit and here I can define a different list element for each exam. So I print, for example, the exam, the course name equals the grade. And then I close the for loop. Okay? Let's try. I rerun the server. Oof. I try with my data, Alberto. One, two, three, four. There is obviously an error. Let's see why. Oh, okay. The session is unavailable because no secret key was set. This is because Obviously, uh, data inside a session are encrypted. Uh, and so, we must define a secret key in our server to encrypt the session. Okay? 
So we must define app dot secret key, and here we can put a string, for example, very very secret. Okay. So the session will be encrypted with such a secret key, very secret key. Let's start again. One, two, three, four. Okay. So as you can see, there is a list of uh, of exams of my exams, and if I try to reload the page, okay, the server uh, remembers that I am already authenticated, and so it shows to me my exams. Okay. Now we can add maybe a go back button here to go back to the home page. So in exams, go back to the home page, URL for index right let's try again here is the page I can go back and obviously there is a, a problem because there is the login but I am already authenticated okay so also in the index page, we could add a, a check in the session to, to check if the user is already authenticated. So uh, here in the index, before rendering the template, I can check if the user is already authenticated. User ID equals to session dot get. The key was user ID and the default value the empty string. So if there is a user ID in the session, so the user ID is different from the empty string, this means that the user is authenticated. So I can use, for example, a flag, let's call authenticated, I put it false, and if in the session there is a user ID, I change the value of such a flag to true, okay? And then I can pass this information to the index page by defining, for example, a status parameter equals to authenticated. Now in the HTML file, I can check the value of the status parameter and I can dynamically change the content of my, of my index page. So here, I can define an if statement. If status is equals to false, this means that the user is not authenticated, so I should display the form to login, right? Else, the user is authenticated, and so I could show, for example, a link to, to the exam page. So, for example, you are already authenticated and then a link go 
to your exams. You are at four. The logical name exams. And if. Okay, is it clear? So let's say that this page is dynamic. If the user is authenticated, it shows this part of HTML. If the user is not authenticated, otherwise it shows this line of, uh, of text. Okay, let's try. Rerun. And now we can say that our web application works because with our code the web server remembers that I am already authenticated so I can go directly to my exams and can, I can go back and there is no login here. Questions? We can also, maybe this is the last point, we can also add, for example, a logout button, okay, to log out from, from the website. So, for example, in the index, Below the link for my exam, I can define a link to log out. And I imagine a route for the logout, so URL 4. For example, logout. Uh, single. Okay. As for the login route, this route will not render in any template, but it will redirect the user to a specific page. And uh, here you can define the route app dot route slash log out def log out and how can I log out the user from the system in your opinion we can delete the cookie, can delete the cookie or yes we can delete the content of the cookie for example so we can delete the user ID field of the session del session user id okay and then we can redirect the user to the home page is it clear so let's try i am authenticated i can go to my exam can go back and I can no <laughs> I cannot log out there is an error URL for index uh, let's go back to the uh, index page oh yes brackets Okay, let's try again. Log out, another error, obviously. Uh, maybe 
Yes. Return redirect. Now it should work. Logout. Oh, okay. <coughs> and obviously, I can also log in for John Do. Five, six, seven, eight. There is only one exam. Go back. Log out. Any questions? So we used the database for storing uh, all the information of our web application. And we used the session for storing some data. OK? And in this case, a field to, to remember the web server that the user is already authenticated because we use session because the HTTP protocol is stateless and session that are based on cookies can be used to store some data associated with a session with the website. Okay, no questions? So I think that for this lesson is enough. Have a good night. Thank you for your attention.